So the best testimony that our company has really is that traditional education seminar companies have roughly a 20% refund rate. Without going into any specific names, you can think of all the big firms such as Invest Tools, Better Trades, Optionetics, et cetera, that are in the same business that we are in. Everybody has a right of rescission period. And traditionally, the average in this industry is roughly 20%. In other words, of 100 people that sign up to take a seminar, 20% will go home, tell their spouse what they just bought. Their spouse will say, you know what, I was thinking about using that money to buy drapes. You get your money back. Or they'll get buyer's remorse or what have you. And of that 100 people that signed up, 20 people will refund. It's just standard in this industry. We've had seven refunds in five years. And probably half of those refunds we gave willingly. No one even called us up for the refund. They were just having tough times. Said, you know, we really love your product. We really want to take the class, but, you know, I just lost my job or whatever. And it was just one of those heartfelt cases that the girls working in the office heard and took the heart. And we said, you know what, take the class for free. We'll refund you anyways. Um, so we think that speaks volumes about Random Walk. And in short, the biggest reason why we became successful is because of success itself. Um, all of our trades that we do for some of the you know, webinar series and stuff like that are totally transparent. We tell everyone what we're doing, when we're getting in, when we're getting out. And we've had uh, five semesters so far of eight weeks each on this webinar series we started, and every one has been profitable. So that in itself speaks volumes about whether we know what we're doing or not. <laughs> now, the topic I'm going to be talking about tonight is the broken wing butterflies. Okay? And, and this is really the book that sort of launched us into success. This is what Robert has been talking to you guys about, and it is really the development of how a lot of my friends and I were trading on the trading floor itself. When you're a member of an exchange floor, you can either buy a seat, right now I think they're about $3 million, or you can rent one out, and they tend to be about $15,000 a month to rent. Now, the majority of the people on the trading floor, when they're starting out, don't have $3 million laying around, so they rent their seat, hope to make enough money to eventually buy a seat. And so everybody on the trading floor is always referring to their nut. Their nut. Their nut is how much it costs for them to work that month if they don't even show up. They still have to pay for their seat rent and, you know, their office space and et cetera, et cetera. And so everybody was always concerned with their nut. And they didn't really feel like they were trading to make money until they already got past their nut. And then once they got paid, their seat for the month paid off and everything else, then it became their money. And so we had to always develop risk-averse ways of coming up with, with how to grind out on a daily basis money. A lot of guys would sit there and just say, you know what, I'm going to make $1,500 a day or $2,000 a day. There's 20 trading days in a month. If I make $2,000 a day, that's $40,000. My nut is... 15,000, so at the end of the month, I'll make 25 grand. And they just want to keep grinding it out. It's never the get rich mentality on the trading floor. The guys who have the get rich quick mentality tend to be gone after a big move. Big move to the upside, big move to the downside, and you'll no longer see them because they took on too much risk. The people who became successful are the ones who just worried about grinding out and had a goal in their mind. They'd start out at a thousand a, um, a day, and then up to fifteen hundred a day, and then up to two thousand a day, and then up to twenty-five hundred a day, and they kept raising the bar 
for their trading, like Random Walk keeps raising their bar for education. So this is really the book that launched us into um, being recognized as a real uh, force to compete with in the education industry. Now, and, and this book concentrates on the broken wing butterfly and only the broken wing butterfly. It does have a small chapter at the beginning that gives option basics. Every one of our textbooks at the beginning has an introduction of option basics because we don't know what audience we're addressing. And so what we do is we have a an introduction chapter on the option basics, and then we start out basic and work through the textbook up to the advanced. And that's what our students told us they wanted, because there are some really great books out there. Uh, but what most textbooks do is they take a stab at, at a dartboard of where the reader is in their options education. And they base the entire textbook on a stagnant point of options knowledge. And so either the book may be too remedial for you, or it may be too advanced for you, and you're not going to get anything out of it. All of our textbooks start out from the remedial and advanced, uh, advanced through to the professional level so that it's a real linear format. And this is what we're covering right now, and I'm going to be attempting to do the same sort of process here where I'm going to start out with the real remedial and work up to the advanced throughout this session. Now, what is a broken wing butterfly? Think of a traditional butterfly as the buying of a vertical spread and the selling of a vertical spread, where each vertical spread is the same distance in strikes. For example, if we go into a product that's trading at around $380, $400, we can look at buying a put butterfly that is the 380, 360, 340 put butterfly, and that will cost us roughly a 70 cent debit. And I'm using all real numbers that I, I took off of a specific date that we'll get into later so that it, there's no mathematics going on here. These are real numbers from closing prices. What you will see here is there's an equal spacing between the strike prices. 380 to 360 to 340 is exactly $20 apart in strike prices. And that's the traditional butterfly that everyone refers to when they're talking about a butterfly. What a broken wing butterfly is, is we simply pull the tail, the 340 strike, the garbage option, as we call it on the floor, a little further away. And the reason for it is obvious. When you lower the strike price, that option that you're buying, the 340 strike, will going down to the 330 strike will be a cheaper option. So now instead of paying 70 cents for that op, uh, spread, you're buying the spread for a 40 cent credit. Now anyone that's been trading butterflies for a long time tends to either love them or hate them. The people who love them have hit home runs with them. They buy a butterfly for 70 cents, and in this particular butterfly that we're looking at, you can make up to $20. So you're risking 70 cents to make $20. That's a really good risk-reward ratio. The people who hate the butterflies are the people who spend 70 cents for this and watch the market move the wrong way and, and watch that 70 cents evaporate and disappear and the, the spread expire worthless and they lost their full 70 cents. 